<coughs> another experiment that has been done is um, it's what's called the attentional blink. And uh, what you have is that you have to uh, report when you see a target, which is consisting of uh, a full row of, uh, of uh, numbers like this, which is target one. And then you have target two, which is a, a row of uh, lowercase letters. And uh, what's interesting is that if you present this target first, and then uh, you present this target later and you have to report them, then with a lag in this case of, uh, of seven um, strings, and these strings they are presented for I think 83 milliseconds each, so you can calculate up there is uh, somewhere around 500 milliseconds between these two presentations, then you will see that you can actually quite well detect this uh, target number two. But there seems to be an interval, and this in this case with three um, lags or three uh, letter or strings in between when you present first target one and then target two. And if you have this lag, so around these 200 uh, or 300 milliseconds, or almost 250 milliseconds or so, you are actually not able to detect this second uh, target that you all, in with the other intervals, are fully aware of. But in that case, you, you cannot really detect it. Um, so that's called the attentional blink, and it seems that to to uh, be related to a specific time point between these two representations where you completely lack the ability to, to attend to um, the previous or to the, to the new target, maybe because you're engaged in, uh, in uh, thinking about uh, the first target and, uh, and trying to, to comprehend that consciously. Um, so there has been a lot of studies also looking at this phenomenon and uh, they have looked at different regions of the brain where you either detect uh, target two or you miss target two and you can see for instance that <coughs> in some of fusiform gyrus um, and the lateral occipital complex so these are areas in the visual and temporal lobes you will see that you have areas that actually respond even as much to the second target as to the first target, um, or at all comparable. So for instance, the fusiform gyrus seems to respond equally whether you detect the first target or you don't detect the first target. Whereas if you go to superior frontal gyrus and the anterior cingulate and the inferior frontal gyrus and the lateral frontal cortex and also parietal areas, you will see that these areas seems to respond a lot more when you detect um, the second target compared to when you miss the second target. So again, supporting this parietal frontal network that seems to be engaged when you actually consciously detect something in, in the visual.